to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. You like to move it. Let's make it a beautiful day. Happy Friday, fifth grade. We are officially making it through our fourth week of online learning. I am so proud of you. A lot of you were a little bit behind, but you started catching up this week. Um, and, and I really, really appreciate that because that's showing me that you're taking your education seriously, um, even during this, this weird time that we're going through. Okay, so I'm proud of you. Please keep working hard. Please keep making sure that you are submitting your um, assignments for all subjects. And we're gonna go ahead and get started on today's lesson. All right, so our skill that we're going to be working on today is going to be the same thing that we were working on on Wednesday's lesson, which is we will be able to retell, paraphrase, or summarize text in a ways that maintain meaning and logical order. So I want you to open up your books to page 160, 160, and I want you to pause the video and take a few minutes to read your reader tips today. So there are a couple things that I want to point out from your reader's tips. And one of those things is the same thing that we saw yesterday. Retelling, paraphrasing, and summarizing are all ways to restate, uh, restate the meaning and maintain the logical order of a text, okay? Another thing I want you to pay attention to is all of these have some similarities, right? Number one for retelling is include the topic or event. Same thing for paraphrasing, topic or event. Same thing for summarizing, topic or event, right? Number two says include a restatement of the what? Important ideas. So restate the important ideas. Paraphrasing says restate the central ideas and the key supporting evidence and then summarizing include a brief restatement remember brief means short and sweet of uh, again the central ideas number three maintain the same order right for retelling same order for paraphrasing same order for summarizing same order okay and then the last one number four it should be shorter. Notice right here, it should be shorter. When you're retelling something, a story, it should be shorter. For paraphrasing, it should be the same length. And then for summarizing, it should be much shorter. So there are a lot of similarities in these, but there are differences. So make sure you pay attention to those when you get to the questions that are asking you either to retell, to paraphrase, or to summarize. Okay, now let's take a look at our story, which is on page 161. The first thing, obviously, that we need to write down is RNAG, RQPC, and then, of course, NAG at the bottom, okay? So, we're going to do what we've been doing. You're going to do our NAG R, and then you're going to resume the, the video and then I'm going to read uh, the questions to you. Please make sure that you are rereading. These stories are very, very short and they read quickly, so don't just read it and then skip over to the questions. Read it, complete NAG, and then reread. Okay, now that you've completed R Nag R, let's go ahead and look at the questions on page 162. Number one, which best retells the topic of the text? So they're talking about retelling and they're wanting to know the topic. So again, I'm going to have you read the answer choices on your own, and then you're going to eliminate your two silly 
your find your distractor and then get your correct answer if there is a distractor. Now, all right, let's take a look at number two. Number two is asking which phrases, I'm sorry, which paraphrases this section in ancient tradition. So now they're asking you to paraphrase or find which one is, is paraphrasing, but not of the whole story, only of the section in ancient tradition. So what should you do? You should go back and reread just this section. Pause the video and go do that now. Now that you've reread that section, I want you to think about which one of these, one, includes the topic of the text, two, restates the central ideas and key supporting details, maintains the same order as the story, and is about the same length. And I'm sorry, not of the entire story, but of the section in ancient tradition. Keep in mind that these answer choices are a little bit lengthier than what we're used to. So you need to make sure that you are paying attention to what they're stating first, next, and last. Take your time on this one. Okay, and the last question of today, which statement best summarizes the text? So we already know that my proof is going to be whole story because it's asking about the whole text. Now when you're reading these answer choices, you need to make sure that one, the answer choice that you choose is including the topic of the story. It's a brief restatement of the central idea. It maintains the same order as the text and it's much shorter than the original story. Okay, that concludes our lesson. Make sure that you have checked off RNAG RQP and that you have done the check part. Just a reminder that if you are having trouble, guys, if you um, need me to reread, if you need me to reread something, if you need me to clarify something for you, um, I need you to give me a call. Okay, don't be afraid to call me. Um, with your parents' permission, just, hey, I need help on number two, or hey, I need help on number three, okay? So if you don't understand, or if you need help catching up, go ahead and give me a call. The last thing you're gonna do is, of course, quick click on the quizzes link below, and that's how you are submitting your answers. Remember to put your first name and your last initial no nicknames, otherwise I can't give you credit and then I'm going to be calling your parents, bugging them, saying that you haven't completed the lesson, okay? So please make sure that you put your name, make sure that you submit it, and have a wonderful weekend. Hey guys, so you've done a really great job on your work this week with the pretests and the quizzes. So today we're just going to go over a few notes that are similar to what the video talked about. And then you're going to take a short quizzes and I hope that you have a fabulous, fabulous weekend. Happy Friday! Pause the video and copy down the notes and then we will talk about it. So we've been talking a lot about animal adaptations, which are just adjustments that animals have. Our first question here is what do animals do to survive in their habitats? Well, they have structural adaptations and behavioral adaptations. Now the structural adaptations are related to their bodies. These are their physical features, things that we can see. This is the way that the animal is built. So for example, thorns or quills like a porcupine, a tail, many animals have tails feet or claws. We know that predators use their claws to help hunt their prey. Behavioral is actually adaptations that are showing the way an animal acts. So hibernating, like a bear hibernates in the winter 
Web spinning for spiders migrating. A lot of birds fly south in the winter so that they can be in much warmer climates during those winter months. Now we've already talked about how I'm not the best artist and I have a poorly drawn camel right here, but this camel is an example and we're gonna break it down by structural adaptations and behavioral adaptations. So we know that camels live in desert areas, so they have very long eyelashes to protect them from sand because a lot of times it gets windy and that sand picks up and can get into their eyes. So that's why they have those longer eyelashes to protect them from that. If you were to search a Google picture of a camel and zoom in, you would see that their eyelashes are really big. Then I drew the humps for a reason. They have humps to store fat. It helps them metabolize when food and water is very scarce, meaning it's not easily accessible to them. Now behavioral, Camels drink a lot of water when they do find it because it helps them survive in the dry climate. So they might drink more water than your average animal because they don't have free access to water the way that other animals do in different habitats. So this is one example of a behavioral adaptation that a camel has. Okay guys, go ahead and find the quizzes link for Miss Broberg's class underneath the video description and take your quiz. Have a wonderful weekend. Hey guys, good morning. Uh, hopefully y'all are having a great, great day so far. I miss y'all. Uh, today we're going to be continue to talk about animal adaptations, which are the adaptations we're going to be talking about are structural and behavioral. Okay. Uh, lo que vamos a estar hablando hoy van a ser adaptaciones de animales, eh, estructura y comportamiento. Okay. So the structural part is the way an animal is built or plant. That's your body. Okay. And then the behavior, of course, how an animal behaves. Uh, la estructural es la forma del cuerpo del animal. Que, que es como se ve, el comportamiento es, que es lo que hace. Okay, so I'm going to show you my sheet and I want you to take down the notes y quiero que me escriban todo. Okay guys, these are your notes on animal adaptations. Adaptations means to adjust, they're just adjustments. Adaptaciones animales, ajustes, es como que es lo que hacen los animales para que puedan sobrevivir. Okay. So, what do animals do to survive in their habitat? ¿Qué hacen los animales para sobrevivir en su habitat? Well, here, here's what you need to do. You need to copy down these notes. Necesitan que copiar las notas de structural, de estructural. Si quieren hacerlo en inglés, pueden hacerlo en inglés. Si quieren hacerlo en español, pueden escribir en español. There's your behavior, comportamiento. And then we have a camel. Down here in the bottom, we see behavioral. Here's an example of behavioral or comportamiento. Un ejemplo de comportamiento. He drinks lots of water to survive in dry climates. Bebe mucha agua para sobrevivir en el clima seco. Es un cameo. Here you have a camel. I'm not the greatest artist, but you can tell what it is. Structural. Estructural has long eyelashes to protect the eyes from the sand and has humps to store food. Tiene pestañas largas para proteger los ojos de la arena y jarabas para almacenar comida. Has wide feet to not sink in the sand. Y pies anchos para no hundirse en la arena. Okay, so those are the two types of adaptations that we're going to be talking about. All right, Mystery Bodice class, find the link that says Mystery Bodice Quizzes underneath the video description. The questions are both in English and in Spanish. Have a great weekend.
birthday, X. I wanted to give her a huge shout out because X's birthday was on Sunday. And also happy birthday to all of you whose birthdays had happened since all of this had started. So happy birthday, X. Here's your shout out. Now let's go ahead and get started with some math. All right, so here is a review from the problems that you guys worked on last uh, YouTube video. What I want you to do during this time is I want you guys to take out the work that you sent to me on Wednesday and let's go ahead and compare it with the work that I'm going to do it today. You do not have to send me your corrections. I just want you guys to look at both uh, your work and my work to see if you're getting it right. Remember that today you have a quiz. Okay, so one of the uh, problems that I gave you guys on Wednesday said a construction company builds a third of an apartment over the weekend to fit uh, over the following week. What fraction of the apartments have been completed? So right here what we have is we have a third over the weekend and to fit over the next week. And the question was how much have they completed? They've completed a third over the weekend. If this was the whole apartment complex, this is what that they completed over the weekend and to fit one fifth, two fifths over the following week. So what they want to know is what, what have they completed? So you need to combine this part and this part to know how much that they have completed. So we're going to add, you were supposed to add the one third plus the two fifths. Of course, we should know that we cannot uh, add or combine thirds and fifths. So you have to make them into find the common denominator. So three, six, nine, twelve, 15 you can break it up one two three four five times whatever you do to the bottom you have to do to the top five ten fifteen there it is one two three times three so the third is going to be equivalent to five fifteenths and the fifth is equivalent to six fifteenths now what they uh in fifteenths over the weekend, they completed 5 fifteenths. In 15ths, the following week, they completed 6 fifteenths. That is a total of 11 fifteenths. That is what you would recreate here. Another problem that I gave you guys said, Jason saves three fourths of his smoothie for the evening. In the evening, he only drinks a third of, of it and throws the rest away. How much of his smoothie did Jason throw away? So here what we have is we have three-fourths of the smoothie that he had left over and a third that he drinks. And then he throws away the rest. So compare this work to the work that you turned into me on Wednesday. You were supposed to find the rest. How do I find the rest or the remaining? I subtract it to see what I have left was rest over. Again, you cannot subtract thirds from fourths. So you have to make them look the same for a... 12, 3, 6, 9, 12. There it is. There's your common denominator. Go back and see if you change it to 12s and make sure that you subtract it. 1, 2, 3 times 3. 1, 2, 3, 4 times 4. So what you do is you multiply the top. 3 times 3 is 9 12s minus 4 12s. 9 minus 4 is 5 twelfths. That's your answer. Okay, so I also gave you a problem where, that said a line worker uses a fifth of a can of factory glue in each part they work on. Remember I said that when you're doing something repetitively or over and over and over again and you're doing it over and over and over and over again, a fraction, you, you can also just multiply by however many times you do it repetitively. So right here, they work on that. Uh, they use a fifth of a can of factory glue for 12 parts. So they're going to do this repetitively 12 times. And you, know, you want to know how many parts, uh, how many cans of glue that the line worker utilized in this shift. So go ahead and compare yours with mine. We have a fifth. We're going to use a fifth 12 times. So I'm going to do it repetitively 12 times. You were supposed to multiply across. That's 12. 5 times 1 is 5. 12 divided by 5 is, I believe, 2 holes and 2 fits. That is your answer for that one. Go ahead and check your work. Make sure you're checking because you're going to have a quiz. Um, and so it's a good time right now to see if you're doing these correct. The final one said, the salon will give a bonus to a third of their employees. The salon currently employs 
30 people. How many uh, employees will receive a bonus? Here, you're finding a part of a group. I keep telling you guys that if you're looking for a fraction of a group and you have a whole number of, for the group and a fraction for the part, you can find out what that quantity is by multiplying. So in this problem, you're finding a third of 30. A third, a part of that group is going to get the bonus. So a third of 30 can be found by multiplying a third times 30. A third times 30 equals 30 thirds, which once you divide it, 30 divided by uh, th three, you're gonna get 10. 10 people will get a bonus. Go ahead and check this with the work from um, Wednesday. Again, that was a review from the things that you have been doing for the last uh, two weeks. Um, and so what's going to happen now is I am going to drop a link on the description below and, um, like the science and the, and the reading quizzes, and you're going to, um, take your quiz on there. You do not have to send me your work. I repeat, do not send me your work. All I want is for you to go to the description of this video and take the math quiz. Do not send me anything. All of your grades are going to be taken from there. So again, happy late birthday, X. And uh, I just can't wait to see you guys again. Uh, I absolutely miss you. I totally forgot about Ms. Guerra's challenge. So you guys are gonna have to wait um, for the, uh, the TikTok. The last thing is this, um, you can only take the quiz one time and uh, I can see how many times you take it. Um, and keep up with your work because for the following, uh, the next raffle is going to be for a pizza being delivered to your house. Again, I'm not going to tell you when I'm going to raffle that, uh, but just keep up with your work and I have a that prize for you coming up soon. All right, guys, I'll see you guys soon. Um, take care. Okay, guys, for Friday, for today, uh, lesson 12 for April 17th, you're going to have three problems for your UPSI. Three word, two word problems and one order of operations. So make sure you do that. And then you're gonna have four word problems, all having to do with either adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing fractions. So make sure that you copy down the problem the way I wrote it for you. If it's addition or subtraction, remember you have to get an equivalent fraction and then do the operation. If you add and you come up with an improper fraction, Remember to divide and change that or convert into a mixed number. Okay, so look at the problems carefully and work them out. Make sure you send me a picture of them for a grade. Okay, guys, here's your first problem for your UPSI for Friday. El Rodeo de Santa, San Antonio obtiene un ganancia de 36 dólares para cada persona que asiste el evento. ¿Cuánto dinero ganará? El rodeo con 150 asistentes. Okay, so you go to the rodeo, they charge you $36 per person. 150 people go. How much does the rodeo get? There's your order of operations. There's your order on top. Make sure you solve it. And then here's your third one. El entrenador recomendará una parte de su equipo para un liga de verano. El entrenador planea elegir un tercer del equipo. El equipo está formado por 36 jugadores. ¿Cuántos jugadores se recomendarán para la liga de verano? So, if he's trying to make a team with one third of 36 players, how many players are going to be on the team? Here are the word problems for Friday, lesson 12. La empresa constructora construye dos terceros de los apartamentos sobre el fin de semana y tres quintos durante la semana siguiente. ¿Qué fracción de los apartamentos se harán completado? So you have a construction company that builds two-thirds of the apartments over the weekend and three-fifths over the following week. What fraction of the apartments have been completed? That's problem number one. Here's a problem. Make sure you come up with an equivalent fraction. Okay, here's problem number two. Again, I did English and Spanish. So those of you that wanted in English, those of you that wanted in Spanish, Here's an English. A line worker uses one fifth of a 
of a can factory glue in each part they work on. They work on 12 parts this shift. How many parts of cans of glue did the line worker utilize this shift? Un trabajador de línea usa un quinto de un pegamento de factoría de latas en cada parte de trabajar en. Trabajan en 12 partes este turno. ¿Cuántas partes de latas de pegamento utiliza el trabajador de línea este turno? There's your problem. Okay, here's problems three and four. Problem three. Julio saves three-fourths of his smoothie for the evening. In the evening, he only drinks one-third and throws the rest away. How much of his smoothie did Julio throw away? Julio salva tres cuartos de su líquido para la noche. Por la tarde, solo bebe un tercero y tira el resto. ¿Cuánto de su líquido Julio le tiró? Okay, number four. The salon will give a bonus to one-third of their employees. The salon currently employs, employs 30 people. How many employees will receive a bonus? Un salón dará un bono de un tercero de sus empleados. El salón actualmente tiene 30 personas. ¿Cuántos empleados recibió el bono? There's your problem.